My title is uh, Converter Fed Synchronous Machine for Variable Speed Operation of uh, Pump Storage Plant. As Arne explained, all the synchronous machine that runs today in hydropower plants runs at constant speed. So in variable speed operation, we cannot run as it is. Uh, we'll have to use one another device to let it run at uh, different speed. So I'll explain a little bit about that one, that how we can execute that one from electrical perspective. There may be some challenges from civil and mechanical side, uh, but I'm looking into the electrical perspective. So here it is. Uh, which is the pointer? Okay. Yeah, okay. The relation between electrical and mechanical speed is like this. So here we run the turbine at mechanical speed, and then the number of pole pair decides the frequency of the grid. So we mostly run at constant speed, and the frequency of the grid remains constant. And we are connected directly to the grid, the synchronous machine. But as we all are working towards variable speed operation to gain something from turbine efficiency and from uh, grid stability perspective, which my other colleague will uh, present later on, for that we'll have to run the turbine at different speed. And we cannot do that in this configuration because you see if we'll reduce the speed, then the frequency of the grid will change, which we are not allowed to do because there are thousands of other electrical machines connected to the same grid, and we cannot reduce the speed of all at once. Then we need to decouple that, ma that particular machine, which, want, which we want to run at different speed from the grid, and we can do that by using a frequency converter, or inverter, converter, whatever you say, okay? <coughs> So it, it, it's, it's not that uh, we are trying to do this one for the first time. There are already some existing technology that are executing this variable speed operation as of today. But how we are doing it uh, differently, yeah, I'll, I'll go through it. So as per today, we have another kind of uh, motor generator system that uh, enables the variable speed technology, which is called induction machine. Arne talked about a synchronous machine, but this is uh, a synchronous machine. Means synchronous machine runs at constant speed. This in asynchronous machine do not run at uh, synchronous, like synchronously rotating speed, not constant speed. So that is called induction machine. Uh, one type is induction machine as well. So today that this type of machine is being used, oh, Today, this type of machine is being used to vary the speed. And in that one, we have, as Arne was feeding the power to the rotor, here we feed the power through the rotor as well. And we need a very small converter there to vary the speed, like only 30% only of the size to, reduce, uh, to adjust the speed to 10% of the nominal speed. And that is good enough uh, in the range of variable speed operation. But uh, the, the, this technology was uh, developed quite long back, but it has some known disadvantages that we cannot change from generation mode to pumping mode or pumping mode to generation mode dynamically. We need to blow the water away from the turbine housing, which is called a spiral casing, before we, run, before we, we turn it from uh, generating to pumping mode. So we cannot dynamically switch. We'll have to wait for a, while, uh, for a while, like maybe five, 10 minutes, and then we can switch the mode. The other technology could be that we, we use the generator as of today, the synchronous generator, and then we use a full size converter in between, which completely isolates it from the grid, and then we can we can switch the system dynamically as well. But for that, as you see that this, this whole power will go through this converter, we need a 100%, uh, we need a full-size converter, 
like 100% capacity of the stator winding. And that makes it quite huge one and a bit lossy one as well. But it has some advantages as well. As you can see, that we don't need to blow the water from the ho turbine housing to run it in pumping mode or in generating mode. We can switch from one mode to the other mode on fly, like uh, depending on the inertia of the water and the machine. And we can, and in power system, we need some reactive power as well, quite often. So when there is, it is, when this machine is running at low load, we can give some reactive power from this converter as well to support the grid voltage. So that could be one of the few advantages. And yeah, and as it was mentioned in previous case, here, if we want to go for this system where we need a smaller converter, in, in existing power plants, we have, we have synchronous machine, so we'll have to have a new machine as well. But in this new one, we can, we can keep the machine as it is, but by a big converter. So there are pros and cons. So that's why it's a bit attractive for retrofit projects as well. How is the situation today? Yeah, ABB. ABB is a big uh, elect electrical uh, <laughs> equipment company and they have supplied a 100 megawatt converter to one of the power plant in Switzerland, it's Grimsel. It's a very big one, but uh, at least it is working. And here you can see that they have used a full power converter between this uh, generator and this transformer and have made it working. It's a combination of 250 megawatt unit and using these transformers as well. So those are the challenges of today, using a full power converter that we need, you see, one, two, three, four extra transformers to, uh, to make the system working. So I'm working a bit to the topology where we'll not need these transformers and how can we get that one? I have uh, some basic uh, examples and I'll go through it. Yeah, so depending on the, uh, these are the advantages of the technology that without full converter, yeah, it takes quite long. Uh, in some cases, it takes more than 10 minutes as well to switch the mode, but with full converter, we can do it within two to three minutes for a 300 megawatt unit. So that would be the advantage, having a full converter. <coughs> yeah, so talking about the converter, which will enable this technology. What are the requirements of the converter? Uh, as we saw in the demonstration earlier, that the requirement from the machine is that if it is running smoothly, it produces a sine wave. So what we need from the converter that it produces us exactly like this sine wave as it was without converter which is a bit difficult thing from the converter. We'll see it later on. And then our requirement is that additional transformer that we saw earlier, that four additional transformer, that should not be in the, uh, in the picture. And the voltage level, like the output voltage, uh, in big hydropowers, like earlier we saw in 100 megawatt or in 200 megawatt units, they produce at uh, 13 kilovolt or 15 kilovolt, in some cases 20 kilovolt as well. So we need to reach that voltage. And we should have as minimum harmonics as possible because it causes additional losses in the damper winding. It produces a ripple as you can see here and some other losses as well. Because you can see here that if we have harmonics, this is a bit exaggerated form to have a visual feeling that if we have sixth harmonics or fifth harmonics, you can see the rotation will be like this. The, the opposing torque will be like this and it will make the rotor not running smoothly. That will cause some additional bearing stress and uh, probably mechanical people knows better that what mechanical problems it will create. So for converters, we have several options to go for. We call it one two-level converter, 
where I'm assuming that we'll get DC from somewhere, and then we are producing ABC, like this will be the converter outputs. So it's a two level, like this is a switch actually. It's, it's, it looks like that, but it's, it's a switch that uh, as Arne was turning on and off, it's only thing that we can turn it on and off quite fast. Uh, this one, if we do like this light switch on and off, probably we can do it five times in a second with hand, but this one we can do maybe. Uh, the new switches we can do at 100 kilohertz as well. So every one nanosecond, every one microsecond at least, if we run at one megahertz. But we'll not do that high in our cases, but uh, that, the, that's possible with some devices, some type of devices. So in two level converter, you can see our requirement is like this sine wave, but we are getting this one. So this is not a sine wave, but it has a lot of sine wave. It has some harmonic distortion. It has, uh, as I'm showing some harmonics here, it has some harmonics, but of quite high order, like 50, 50, 57th harmonics, 58th harmonics, 61 harmonics, 62, the of very high order, but not of low order, which can be filtered. So we get like this. If we go for three level, then you see the number of switches increases quite dramatically. Here we need two switches in one phase, but here we need altogether six. In some cases we need only diodes, so we need six. So the number of switches increases, but it is going quite towards sinusoidal. And if we go for five level, you can see, Number of switches, this is only one phase now. It was quite clumsy to draw three, all three phases. So I have drawn only one phase, you can see here. Or we can have like this, or we can have like this. So you can see how many switches we are using. And, but we are, we are approaching quite close to sinusoidal. But nobody is producing this type of converter at the moment. Because it is too bulky and it becomes too unpredictable to calculate some other parameters that comes with this configuration. So at the moment in, in, in the market, we have only this converter and this converter available, which is a bit difficult to match the voltage level, the one that we want, like 13 kilovolt or 15 kilovolt. That's why ABB has delivered it with transformer. But yeah, as we go higher in level, then we can have, but there is lots of other complexity, which is, uh, which is obstructing to go us further. So you can see that if we go three, then we have this much harmonics. If we go for five, we have this much. If we go for seven, we have little. If we go higher and higher, we'll have, but it becomes more and more complex. And you see, we need this many switches. Yeah, here is again. So as we, as we go, let's say, in seven level, you see it, it becomes uh, ah, almost sinusoidal with a little bit of harmonics in the current, 0.2%. With five level in current, we have 0.5%. And that will cause, so as we go higher in level, we'll have less loss in the damper winding, in the machine. So there is another technology which was proposed, invented by Processor Market in uh, 2002. He called it um, uh, Modular Multi-Level Converter. So here we can use uh, a small, a small units of uh, a small converters, which we can connect in series and can get, you see, a quite good. We cannot get a pure sinusoidal at in any case, that, that's, uh, Pure sinusoidal means the one that we showed uh, earlier, or we get fr directly from this machine. Uh, that, that, that's not possible at the moment, but we can, we can get as close to sinusoidal. You can see the uh, blue line. So blue line is the requirement, and we are getting the red line from this converter. 
So this converter is quite promising. It has some challenges at low speed, but uh, this could be one of the options uh, uh, for this case as well. Yeah, and in my case, um, I'm, I'm living with two, con two level converter for the moment. And if we'll get some time, then we'll work with uh, MMC as well. And we'll see that how we can we meet the challenge or not. Yeah, so this is the a bit of control strategy that in Francis turbine, we have this type of torque coming from the turbine and we can control the torque from the synchronous machine in this way using the converter. And that's how we can govern the speed to the level we like. And we'll emulate the so there will be two, two set of converter in my lab. One for emulating the turbine on this side and one for emulating the machine. The machine is as it is, but with the converter and connected to the grid. So the, this side is the real side. Which, so the synchronous machine at the moment directly connected to the grid. I'll uh, do some experiments using this converter in between. And that's my project, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you.